Hello everybody, I want to talk to you about why I've introduced a bandsaw into my working space, my garage space. And uh, some of you will think that I have never used machines or never used a bandsaw before, which isn't the case. I've used a bandsaw since I was very young. Uh, when I first was working in my apprenticeship, I was introduced to safe practices for using the bandsaw. And I actually use it considerably more now that I'm getting older, I use it for the long rips, for continuous, repetitive cuts and things like that. My reason for introducing it now is because I feel like we have a maturity of people who have been working with their hand tools, and now it's time to introduce something that will free up some of their time and free up some of their energy to do the more important elements while the bandsaw is taking care of the big, heavy rip cuts the big sections of wood that need to be reduced down to smaller components, things like that. So I think that introducing this now is going to help a lot of people. If you have a bandsaw, then you can take it out and you can get it back into tip-top condition because I'll be teaching, showing you how, which blades to use, how to fine-tune the bandsaw. If you don't have one, don't worry, just continue as you are because you can do everything that we teach on masterclasses or on YouTube without using a bandsaw. So it's a complementary thing. I think that the bandsaw is the machine with the smallest footprint. It's the one that requires very minimal maintenance. And when you, you learn how to tune it and get it set up properly, you'll be amazed at how you can fine tune some of your cuts and some of the materials that you're using. We probably will never use it for certain tasks. It's not going to take over our woodworking, but it's a good um, addition to have when you need it. Well, we're about ready to look at a bandsaw and this is the bandsaw that I've chosen. It's not any different than other bandsaws really. It's a moderate sized bandsaw. I find um, a bandsaw is the, probably the one machine that I would want to have in my workshop. Why? because I'm a hand tool enthusiast, I love hand tool woodworking, and this machine helps me greatly because it will dimension large sections of wood down to small sections. I can do a variety of things with it. I can do rip cuts along the length of the wood, I can do cross cuts across the grain, and I can do curved cuts with it. So it does a variety of things that I like and that will help me in my woodworking. It takes out the heavy work out of woodworking, and it does uh, so many different things. If I want to cut veneers on it, I can cut veneers. I can cut large sections of wood. I can even cut some joints on this machine if I want to. So that's why I like having this bandsaw in my workshop. When you start to look for a bandsaw, um, there are certain features to a bandsaw that are the same on every bandsaw. Like in this case, I've got two wheel bandsaw. You can get three wheel bandsaws but they're difficult to set up and hard to maintain that three point of contact with the blade. So I'm recommending that you just go with a, a two wheel bandsaw. They're easier to set up and easier to maintain. So when I say two wheels, if I unfasten this door and this door, I've got a wheel inside here on the top that works perfectly. This is the top wheel, the bottom wheel. I've disconnected this from the main supply, so I've got no problem about the, the, the machine switching on. So I've got a, a wheel in the top and what I'm looking for on this wheel is a cast iron wheel. I like the cast iron over the aluminium ones. They add more weight and more torque. Uh, they give it the momentum that the bandsaw needs to maintain a constant speed, not just relying on the electric motor, but also relying on the cast iron wheel. So I've got cast iron wheels. To carry the cast iron wheel with the kind of tension that I need on the blade, I need something that in the frame of the bandsaw is strong enough to resist the kind of pressure, 2,000, 2, 2,500 pounds of pressure on a wide blade. It's a lot of pressure. So what I'm looking for in here in this section is I want heavy gauge steel or a cast iron frame. In this case, it's a box structure. It's, uh, structure. it's very rigid, very strong, and more than equal to the task of the pressure that I might apply to this. So, there, I've got cast iron wheels, a good sturdy frame, something that's not vibrating all the time. I've got a cast iron table on here. That adds weight and body to the whole machine. 
and gives it a certain rigidity that I like. On my doors, I've got some switches here. So there's a magnetic switch top and bottom. If I open the door or if the, the door isn't fastened exactly where it should be, if I haven't catched, uh, if it hasn't caught properly and it springs open, the switch will automatically switch off the machine and shut it down in a, an emergency stop. I like that feature. It's a very safe feature. So I can't open the machine without switching the machine off. Not that I ever would, but accidents happen. So I've got a switch at the bottom that does exactly the same thing. Another feature that I like on my bandsaw is extraction. So I've got two points of extraction on this machine. One right at the bottom where the, the dust collects at the bottom of the machine and one right by the origin of the dust right here on the blade. So it's, it drops down, it goes straight into the chute, sucks the dust out. I have very, very low possibilities of the buildup of dust if I have that machine on. So that's another feature I'm looking for. Lock the doors off. But on this one, what I want you to see here is that this is enclosing the blade so it winds up and down. Now this, yours may not wind. It may be that you just turn a thumb screw and you catch this and you drop it down. Nothing wrong with that. I used one of those for 30 years, never had a problem with it. But what this does is it closes down. So if I'm cutting a narrow piece of wood or like this one, I drop the blade down to reduce the exposure of the blade in here. So if I've got to change that, and go to a taller piece of wood. I can go up to 11 inches on this bandsaw, just a little bit more than 11 inches. I can change that setting to here, drop down to a suitable height, move my fence in place, and rip cut along the length that way. So I've got the height and I can adjust the height. I like that. What I'm looking for also is I'm looking for a good fence. I'm looking for a mechanism that guides my material but guides my material so when I lock this off it locks it off exactly 90 degrees to the table it's parallel to the blade so when I run my wood along here I've got a perfectly parallel cut but I'm going to show you some other things that do affect the cut that's the tension of the blade the dullness of the blade the size of the teeth things like that those are all things we have to consider when we're looking at a bandsaw like this so I've got my fence in place. You might want to consider an alternative fence. Here's one that we can lock off here and here. So this is a magnetic fence and it's very solid. So I can use that if your fence is damaged or out of place, you don't know where it is, you might consider having a magnetic fence or another fence added to your bandsaw. So that's some, some basic essentials. What about uh, tensioning the blade? I'm going to go to the back of the bandsaw here for a second. I can tension this here by turning this wheel, this lowers the, the top wheel down uh, and then when I turn it, I tension the blade by stretching that blade by turning that wheel. This increases the height of the top wheel in relation to the bottom wheel. But I've also got a feature here. This cam lever drops that blade and inside, you can't see it right now, but that blade uh, is loose and I can retension that when I put a new blade in or I need to align the blade. I push this and lock it off. That's what I do with it. I've got this on wheels right now. I would never run this bandsaw while it's on the wheels without the, the machine sitting squarely on the floor. So I've got cam levers at the bottom here that drop the a whole machine onto its own uh, base and I have actually raised this machine up four inches because I like my bandsaw table Higher than most people run theirs at. That's my personal preference. That's up to you when we're talking about safety The important thing about safety is that you evaluate your own safety read the guides by the manufacturer follow uh, any advice that you can get For the safety of your machine. So I have everything that I've got on this machine, it's uh, got an automatic kick off here so I can kick the bottom here, that will put the brake on the motor and the machine will stop within two seconds, which is enough for me. I'm not sure if that's an essential feature to a bandsaw, it's just nice to have. I went for 40 or 50 years without the kick and it worked fine, but it's nice to have these additional features. Red button, switch off, auto stop, it's right there. These are the kind of things I'm looking for in a machine. 
And I think that would just about sum up what I'm looking for. Apart from in here, I've got guides in right inside here. I've got a, a guide on the back and two guides on the side of the blade. And what they do is they stop the blade from wandering from left to right or from front to back. If I push a piece of wood into the blade, there's a tendency for this to push back away from the wood, but there's a bearing on the top and a bearing underneath here that pushes against that bearing and keeps it square to the edge of the wood. So I use that. Uh, those are natural features. They're good features to have in a bandsaw. And most all bandsaws that I know of have that feature built into the machine. Some, instead of having a rotary guide on the side, some will have a square block. And they work equally as well. They work just fine. I used them for years, never had a problem. These guides are adjustable, so you adjust them according to the size of the blade that you might be using. In this case, I've got a half inch blade in here, but you may have a quarter inch blade or a one inch blade on your bandsaw. Those guides need to be adjustable, so I've got those features in my bandsaw. I like that. It's, it's very good to have those. What else is there? There are many things that we could talk about. Tensioning the blade. How do you tension the blade? But uh, this particular, this is just the introduction to get you started to looking for your bandsaw. This is what I like about a bandsaw. You may add more or less features to yours. It's entirely up to you.